Hi, I'm Bart Hansen. I'm the owner and lead instructor for CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record live at 2 p.m. Eastern Time every Monday. If you enjoy this video, hit that like button. And if you want to submit to be on the show, take a look at the information in the description. Go ahead. I have a home game. Yep. One three hand for you. Yep. Okay. Seven handed. Uh, we're doing optional straddles under the gun. Okay. So seven handed with optional straddles okay so it starts off under the gun straddles to 25 so what's the game size by the way one three one three and how deep are you guys 1400 effective okay so pretty deep and under the gun straddles to six 25 oh straddles to 25 wow okay it's a pretty big straddle yeah it was uh <laughs> we were doing some double straddles and just the the cap on the straddle was 25 yeah he decided to straight open the 20 or straddle to 25 this in okay um button calls small blind calls i'm in second blind with queen ten of hearts so the button just open limps right calls the 25 yeah and you're in the what the middle second blind? blind? Second blind. Okay, so hero in the I guess it would be the big blind, right? Yep. Yep. Queen of hearts. So of small hearts. blind. Small blind calls. Okay. Uh, I have queen ten of hearts. I raised one twenty five. Okay. Straddle folds, button folds, small blind calls. All right, so we got this mega straddle here, twenty five. The button calls, which is an open limp here for twenty five. Button. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, small blind calls. You're in the big blind, and you get queen ten of hearts, and you make it one twenty five. One twenty five. Fold, fold, and the small blind calls. So you're in position in the pot, probably like three hundred or so. Okay. Correct. Yep. Flop comes king nine two, king of hearts. Okay. Give me one second here. Sorry, I'm just gonna need to. There we go. Now we're good. Now we get the action. Go ahead. What was the flop again? King 9-2. Okay. King of hearts. King of hearts. I'll just put like nine of clubs, deuce of diamonds. Okay. So you flop a gut shot here at the back door flush draw. Correct. Okay. Small blind checks. Mm -hmm. I bet 150. So about half the size of the pot. Okay. And small blind calls. Well, the pot's getting big here, buddy, huh? 600 now? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> For a 1-3 game? I mean, I don't know how How often was somebody straddling 25, by the way? Was this, like, a pretty big we, outlier? We had a... So, it was... We had consistent straddle and then double straddle to, like, 24. Uh-huh. Or 20. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, not so many single straddle 25s. The only thing about your sizing that I would say is... When you look at the, to sort of shape this hand for possible multiple barrels in a spot like this, I would say that now the pot's 600, you've put in, you know, just under 300, so you've got about 1,100 left. Like, if you were to make a half pot size bet on the turn, if he were to call, the pot would be like, you know, 1,200, you'd have 700 left. I might make a smaller bet sizing on the flop to leave, a I mean, you do have, I mean, it's basically like a less than 100 big blind hand, right? And I might make a little bit of a smaller bet sizing on the flop to leave a little bit more room. Um, half pot, you know, I might bet like 100 to 125 and really sort of lay the hammer down on the turn. Um, you know, unless you go larger on the flop and you think he's just going to fold out everything but a king, but he really shouldn't be super strong when... This is different, obviously, than if it was a Mississippi straddle and the action went in order and he was first and he might have limped in. I mean, the button has limped and he just limps. He really shouldn't have that strong of a hand, right? Correct. I mean, he shouldn't really have ace-king. And I could definitely see you probably going for three barrels here, maybe a cross, like, blank runouts. So king of hearts, nine of clubs, deuce of diamonds, you have queen, ten of hearts. So you bet 150, he calls in the small blind, okay? Burn is an ace of hearts. Okay, Ace of Hearts. Wow. So you've got a royal flush draw now, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Small blind checks. Yep. I bet 300. Oh, you did bet 300. Okay. 
small blind calls. So now the pot is 1,200, and you have about, what, just a hair over 800 left, something like that? I have about, um, yeah, give or take. Yeah. Here's the thing that I would say. Obviously, this is a really good barrel card for you, right? And we look at sort of turn sizing sometimes in a couple of different ways. This this card is so good for you. I don't even know if you do need to really overbet. And the ace doesn't interact really with the board at all, meaning that um, he's not going to pair up with like ace high, especially after betting half the pot size. No, I was only yeah. thinking that it only helps by the ace two and ace nine. Right. Call. I mean, right. here's the problem. So you would think that this would be like, oh, I'm just going to triple barrel away, right? Like if I, you know, if I miss here, right? But for those reasons, and I remember when you emailed this hand in, once he calls a half pot size bet on the turn, I honestly don't know if I would triple barrel at the end if I didn't make it there because of the fact that what we just talked through, which is what is he continuing with here on the turn? It's almost like he has to have a minimum of aces up. And uh, I don't think that he's going to fold those hands. You know, we talked about he really shouldn't have like aces, kings. The only way that he would be trapping with some sort of crazy big hand was if he was going to limp re-raise like the straddle and then when he raised, or excuse me, then when you raised and the straddle fold and the button folded, he decided to like trap. But you have the queen of hearts in your hand. Like when you start to look at like, well, what is he, what can he possibly call with on the turn? It would be the type of hand that you have, which would be basically be the gut shot that picks up hearts on the turn. But you block all that because you have the queen of hearts and you have the... Uh, ten of hearts. I mean, I guess he could have a hand like eight, nine of hearts or jack nine of hearts or something like that. But I mean, that's really only two combinations of hands. Then again, he shouldn't have ace king because he didn't raise pre. So that leaves two combinations of say like ace nine suited, two combinations of ace deuce suited if he's even in there. And then some sets. Weaker. And king jack. You think he's? I don't know. You think he's calling the turn? turn? You think he's calling the it's turn? A percentage of the time, but probably not, and that's why I went for that sizing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go to the river. So river is an offsuit three. Uh, all right. So river is an offsuit three. So three x. Okay. And small blind decides to shove. And small blind shoves now? Yeah. And you have queen ten of hearts, right? Correct. All right. Well, uh, I mean, you can't really call because the problem is is that you, sometimes people do stupid shit with hands that you can't beat, right? Like you look at this and you're like, well, I have the nut no pair. I mean, I think a more interesting conversation here is if you were to have – Ace, so let's say you had, um, well, I think, where's the cusp? I think Ace-King is probably a little bit too far up, right, uh, for you to fold. But let's say you had Ace-Deuce yourself. Or let's mm -hmm. say you had King-Nine. King-Nine or Ace-Deuce. Let's say that you raised with, like, King-Nine suited in the spot, flop top two. Um, it would be debatable whether you'd even take the sizing on the turn. But let's say you had Ace-Deuce for making aces up on the turn. And now the guy shoved at the end. Would you call with ace deuce? To me, this looks I'm not like calling that. The, to me to me this looks like a lot of heavy value here. Um, and uh, by the way, small blind is not under the gun plus one, right? You said the straddle was under the, was under the gun, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so he doesn't really have any strong hands here. But I think you had emailed this in because you were trying to figure out what this represents, right? Basically. Yeah, well, that should he be ever shoving here. And two, if he decides to check, should I? I don't think that, I think we talked through it before. See, this is an interesting one where, again, I don't, I haven't gotten into the, I mean, I know how to use them. And I, I just, I actually expected to take this time during quarantine and, and sort of heavily sort of dive into solver work. In, in, the, in the sense of getting comfortable with using it in a 
because using solver work is a little bit of a skill to be able to use it in the most efficient way. And that's actually thought that what I was going to be able to do in these two months, but I've had these other projects come up. Um, the Poker Bros on Broing and some other things too, where I just haven't had the time to do it because I would really like to see what, say, a solver would say in this particular spot, but the ranges are almost impossible to plug in, right? Like as a small blind complete, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I just think that one in, in practicality, when he calls the turn, I don't know if he's ever folding the river. That's such a great sort of, that's such an unbelievable good card for you. Now, if you had bet something super tiny, like 20%, 15% on the turn, where you could still have some King X, then yeah, I can understand it. But when he calls half pot on turn, I just, yeah, it's it seems very, like he's very, very strong. Now, from your question of should he ever do this from shoving, I mean, not in theory, right? I mean, any, I mean, he, he's going to lose his bluffing equity, meaning like if you were to triple barrel with air, if he just shoves, right? Because you can't, I mean, like the hand that you have, like you can't bluff now when he shoves. And um, will he, the only reason to shove here is, is if he's going to get called by a hand that would otherwise not bet, right? So mm -hmm. we, we sometimes will do that in sort of lower stakes live play, but I can't imagine that you're not betting ace king here. Right? Like, I, I mean, maybe some players might get scared and check behind with, like, ace deuce that would otherwise call. But I would think that the chances that you might bluff as a triple barrel would probably be greater or should be greater than the chances that you are somehow checking back a hand that you would call a shove with. That's the theory of it. You know what I'm saying? What what yeah. ended up happening? I fold it and he well, showed pocket twos. Okay. So um two two. So small blind has two two. But I mean you would have called with Ace King, right? I mean it's like I, I just think you're too far up to not call with Ace King. Ace nine, Ace Deuce starts to become a little bit treacherous. I, I mean, mean it's it's tough. It's it's an interesting spot. I don't know what he, he I don't think he's ever bluffing there. Right, um, right, right. So I don't know why he would be shoving with worse than Ace King. Yeah, but I mean, if you put I yourself in that spot, though, I mean, I, I just find it extremely hard to fold Ace King. Like, it's just, I mean, you, you're you going to have to specifically put him on 2-2 two, two, or a limped in pocket nines. You know what I mean? I just, yeah. I, and I, it's just, I've seen some wacky shit, like, you know, at these levels, so... But, uh, I'm shocked that he shot with the bottom set, considering uh, I feel like my bluffs are so few as well at this point by the time I get to the river. Well, yeah. I mean, your bluffs are very, very few uh, for sure. Um, but, again, I mean, I think that you might be going down, you know, giving this guy a little bit too much credit. You said that this was sort of like a, a home game, right? Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for the call. Yeah, thanks for taking my call. If you like what you've seen here, please hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this call in hand, hit the like button down below. To check out CrushLivePoker.com, click on the link in the description. Use the code YTA300 to get the first 30 days for free.